Welcome to Night's Arcade, I'm Sleepless Night, we're in Hard Space Shipbreaker, and the new 0.6.0 admin oversight update has now arrived. And yes, I know I'm late with the update, but the good news is I'm late because this update is amazing. One of the main changes in this update is a literal game changer. It will change how you approach a cut, and for the first time since Shipbreaker released to early access, there is an additional incentive besides simply paying off your debt to Lynx Corporation. I'll get to that a bit later, but first let's deal with the rest of the fixes and changes that update 0.6.0 brings with it, not least of all, is that Lynx administrator Hal Rhodes is the new character in the game kicking off Act 2, of the three-act Shipbreaker campaign, and if you haven't played Act 1 yet, I won't tell you any more except that to say, I'm pretty sure we're going to love to load this character for his sunny disposition and all that he represents to us hard-working cutters. Act 1 ran from ranks 1 to 7, and Act 2 will take us from rank 8 to 18, and give us more background on the various other characters that were introduced in the first act, if you see what I mean. Unfortunately, it does mean that all progression has been reset once again. Now, BBI have said that they were going to try to avoid this wherever possible, but they have made it clear several times that, you know, this game is still in early access, and whenever there is a major update like this one, it might not always be possible to keep progress and there might be one more progression reset before the main release of the game. Which, by the way, there's still no word on when that will be. Personally, my feeling is that it will follow fairly soon after the Act 3 update, but that is just my opinion. It's not based on anything that I've read or anything that I've heard, and we still don't know how far away Act 3 is yet. Anyway, Act 2's only just dropped. But anyway, resetting progression... It's not something that bothers me too much. I accept that this is still an early access title and progression resets have to be expected in some cases. It's a bit of a pain when you're making update videos like this one because we have to wait for the update to release and then play all the way through all the ranks to the next segment of the story in order to show you many of the new additions. And of course, the way this is being released in three acts means that we have to play for longer each time before we can make the update if we want to show you those things, but you know, that's just the way it goes. They have lowered mastery point requirements for all certification ranks in this update in order to make early progression a little bit faster, and that is definitely noticeable this time, as I played all the way to Act 2 within a couple of hours last night, but my understanding is that this will slow down a bit as you progress to the later ranks. Four new music tracks have been added to the soundtrack that is pumped into your helmet as you cut. All scan modes have been updated for improved readability, clarity and consistency. Reactors are apparently now immune to fire and electrical damage. And ship's power logic has been improved so that, apparently, there will hopefully be no more mystery electrocutions from pieces of equipment which are no longer connected to a power source. And that last one is more important than ever now, as I will explain in just a moment. But first, let me get on to one of my favourite parts of this update, and that is the long-requested three-dimensional habitation unit. Shipbreaker, as some of my viewers will know, is not only one of my favourite games of the last decade, it has become one of my favourite games of all time. And a lot of that is down to the immersion I feel when doing the job. But between shifts was always a bit of a letdown for me, and many others apparently, because it broke that immersion to a great extent by allowing us nothing more than a screen full of text, uh, statistics and equipment upgrade charts to stare at before going back outside. This is your home. There should be something you about it. Some space that you occupy when you aren't working. Even clones need to eat, sleep and recharge their batteries somehow. Well, now it's here and I love it, even though it works more like a point-and-click 90s detective game than it does a completely free-roam 3D environment. And it's kind of janky in places at the moment, but I still love the increased immersion and I have no doubt that BBI will fix those issues very soon based on their previous track record. 
it's grimy. It looks it looks lived in. It feels exactly like the sort of environment I would expect from this job and everything that goes with it. It feels very um, Lynx, I guess. Uh, it actually seems a bit like Lister's quarters might aboard, aboard uh, Red Dwarf. It can be personalised to some extent. There are posters all over the walls which can be changed for those posters you've been finding aboard derelict ships for a while now. And there are even a couple of new ones to find. There's also a bed, obviously, a desk with your employee terminal where you can check your messages, view your certification and rank progression. Uh, and there, this is also where you'll access the Data Miner app to read the contents of any data drives you've picked up and a new thing that I will cover shortly. Elsewhere in the hab, there's a kitchen with nothing much to interact with except the posters at the back of the thing. There's a storage closet type thing where your suit hangs up and a workstation where you can see all of your cutting tools arrayed on the wall there and access the equipment terminal. Uh, and in the equipment terminal, you can place the stickers that you've earned as well as repairing and upgrading your equipment. And one of the new things that this update brings, which might be welcome to anyone who has ever accidentally spent Lynx tokens on things they didn't mean to, is that purchasing an upgrade is now a press and hold interaction. You can also look out the window, just gaze out the window at space and the rail gate and all the comings and goings around Earth, which I think is just fantastic. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'd ever get any work done, but I guess the view's better outside, so who knows? Uh, I just love what they've done with it. I think it's great, even if it isn't currently working quite as well as it could be. A uh, quick look around the hab will also tell you that there is gravity in here. How that's possible, I don't know. If the station is rotating to create artificial gravity, it certainly isn't doing it during working hours, which brings up all sorts of other questions, not least about ships and debris left in the bay between shifts. And if that is the case, what about all the other poor cutters out there whose cutting bays and habitation units you can see in the distance? Where does their gravity come from? Anyway, suspension of disbelief has always been a big part of science fiction, and the last thing you want is a pedantic idiot like me taking a hammer to it, so let's just assume that it's 24th century magic and leave it at that, shall we? Because the real thing I want to talk to you about, other than the 3D hab, is this. When poking around in derelicts now, you may notice some new little bits of debris which weren't there before, mostly um, they're like yellow and black in colour. Now when you first start your career, these look like nothing more than irritating little pieces of rammel that you can't even blast into the furnace with your grapple push, but that will change at rank 8, and here's why. In a moment, and don't worry, I promise you there will be a warning on screen before I do this so that you know when to stop the video. But in a few minutes, not yet, in a few minutes I'm going to give you a story spoiler. But first of all, I want to explain, without revealing anything about the story in the process, why I'm going to give you a spoiler with this update when I don't normally do that. And the reason is because this particular new element completely changes the nature of this game for the first time since Shipbreaker released into early access. It gives you an entirely new incentive to keep breaking ships besides just clearing off your debt, and it forces you to adjust your priorities in a way you've never had to before. But you won't see it until rank 8. So if you've heard something about it, or read about it in the patch notes, yes, it is in the Steam patch notes, and you're curious about this new thing, stick around. But if you haven't read the patch notes and you want it to come as a complete surprise, now is the time to leave the video or jump ahead to the time index now shown on the screen. Still here? Right. So, this time, BBI have introduced the first truly game-changing element since Shipbreaker first came to Steam Early Access. The possibility of escape. Now, when I say escape, I must stress that it's a bit too soon to know exactly what this will mean. But I imagine this is a possible endgame scenario, which might lend itself nicely to a sequel, if there was ever going to be one. Midway through rank 8, you will acquire a ship of your own. 
an armadillo utility rig which, if you've been watching carefully, you might have spotted before in the Lynx induction film. Now you can't go aboard this ship, at least not at this stage, I have absolutely no idea if you'll be able to later on or not, but it offers the promise of a new life beyond the railgate, if you can get it ready for railgate travel. And to do that, you have a new program on your employee terminal called Ship Doctor. A weirdly retro-looking program with strange porno movie type music in the background for some reason, and the less than calming voice of the program's helper, Shippy. A nerve-grating nod to Microsoft Office Assistant Clippy from the turn of the century. The Ship Doctor app will show you a set of objectives, which will mean collecting those new little parts that I mentioned earlier, now found floating around inside Derelict. Now that's all very well and good, you say, but how exactly does that force you to adjust your priorities? I'm glad you asked. You see, some of these components are harder to find than others. And it becomes clear quite quickly that repairing the armadillo is going to require lots of them. So you can acquire more of them by taking apart components that you should be salvaging during your shift. And most of the parts that you will need are found in the higher end components like computer terminals, nacelles and thrusters, and you will need to make a decision. Do I salvage this extremely valuable component and get my debt paid off faster? Or do I rob it of the parts I need to get the armadillo flying, slowing down my debt repayment and possibly making me miss salvage quotas? Now one of the new things in this patch is that a damaged, unsalvageable component will now look damaged. So when you rob them of the parts you need, making sure to disconnect them from the power first, Electrical damage. they will become furnace junk. There isn't anything you can do about the lost money if you decide to do this, but if you're careful, you can still hit those salvage quotas. If you take one or two of the potential strip downs and just leave them to one side until the end of your shift, being careful not to get too greedy, for example just taking one nacelle instead of all four in a single shift, you can wait until you hit salvage level three and then strip any components you have left over for parts. Furthermore, the larger items like nacelles and thrusters contain more than one of the parts that you need and what you get from them appears to be a bit random. These larger components are not necessarily destroyed once you strip one part out and can still be salvaged. I haven't been able to ascertain whether or not they are worth less without that part in, but I would assume so. Will there be some sort of repercussions if we're discovered doing this? I would imagine so, but whether or not that's part of BBI's plan, I have no idea. I, for one, am really excited to see where it goes. And that's about it. There are a few optimizations and improvements which I will list in the description, or you can find them for yourself on Steam, and there are apparently over 150 bug fixes in this patch, though it does introduce quite a few of its own. The most irritating of which that I've found is the inability to continue into a second shift, and that happens to me about half the time at the moment which means I'm missing out on a lot of money as well as missing salvage quotas for about half my work. But I have no doubt that there will be a hot fix dropping very soon. They're usually quite on the ball with that sort of thing. But I don't have much more to tell you. I am still on my YouTube sabbatical, taking time to reorganize the channel and find a more focused direction. And I did have a little bit of a setback on that front this week, but things are still going slowly in the right direction. As soon as I have more information to share with you on Shipbreaker, most especially a date or some sort of idea when we can expect Shipbreaker to go into full release, or when there will be a console release for Shipbreaker, both of which I would imagine will happen at the same time, I would guess. Um, but otherwise, that's it. If you want to keep up to date with what's happening on the channel and what my plans are and how they're coming along, you can join the Knights Arcade Discord, jump into one of my Saturday live streams, or follow me on Twitter or Facebook, or, you know, support me on Patreon if you feel so inclined. The links to all of those things are found in the video description down below, 
or on the Knights Arcade channel header. If not, just leave a like if you like the video, leave a comment if you have something to say, or even subscribe if you want to see more from me in the future. But until next time, from Knights Arcade, this is Sleepless Night, saying nighty-night. <laughs>